What's up guys? He King here bringing you another manga review this week on My Hero Academia or Boku no Hero uh, chapter 342 The Extreme Quiet Before the Storm So yeah, I'm surprised actually. I thought uh, we were gonna get at least one or two more chapters on the villain side of things, but that's not the case. We pretty much got everything we needed from them uh, in terms of the setup and what they're going through and what they're thinking. And now this chapter is pretty much all about the big setup leading to the uh, final battle. So we start off with this uh, guy or a bunch of infiltrators basically who work for All For One who have infiltrated the academy and they've got their new orders and that and they're doing their little things under all for one's uh vision if you will um they're to basically fan the flames i guess uh the school knows of the imp impending danger but they're keeping it from the common people blah 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 the ua is aware that tomorrow shigaraki will be operational in less than a week's time so Apparently what uh, all for one has told them is is that uh, they have to try and do something where you know the fortress the academy Which is supposed to be this big solidified place to do what they can to make it in in as he says in in his in Inhospitable place for Izuku Midoriya. So yeah, make it hell for him basically make it so he doesn't want to stay there Make it so people will hate him etc etc We then cut to the student dorms obviously where the uh Students have just uh, come back from uh, a day out of helping uh, the more professional heroes in the area, in the city. And they're now taking a break. We've got uh, a lot of these characters whose names I don't know, by the way. Because, again, I've, I have I mostly just watched the anime, so hard to keep up. Hold on a second. Loki. Loki. Bad kitty. Bad kitty. Bad, cute little kitty. Come on, say hello to the camera. Come on. Come on, you bundle of fur. No, if you're going to do this, you're going to go in front of the camera and you're going to say hi. Hello. Hi. Stop being annoying. Yeah, can you do that? I'm, oh, man, he was so little, he could sit on my lap and that. And when I went to sleep, he'd, crawl, he'd jump up on my chest and cause me breathing problems. Now he doesn't do that anymore. Hell, he needs to jump up on behind and stay on my shoulder. Now he doesn't do that. Now he's too big for all those little cuddly wombie wombies. So sad when you see them grow. He's so cute. Yes, you are. Don't go to the door, please. Look, I can't keep letting you in and out. Like, I can't do this review because he's annoying. You're annoying. You're annoying. You're, you're a furry, annoying little beast. Anyway, so yeah, we cut to the characters coming in. We got Kaminari falling down. We got uh, Tesru, is it? Ejiro, um, Red, is it Red? Is it Red Eyed? I really need to go back and learn these characters' names. It's really, really bad that I don't know their names. Um, well, we continue on. We get Ida coming in as well. And uh, yo, man, the mask, like he's got this Iron Man style mask that sort of now like uh, automatically folds backwards now, which is awesome as hell. Uh, you got Mi 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 Minato, is it? Is it Minato or Me Mento or Beanie's pervy little self? You know that. You know, I wish we had even a little spare time to swap dirty stories. Like Jesus Christ, come on! I'm very curious what his room looks like. Seriously, like you know, we know when we got when we had that episode in the anime, and I, it's in the manga as well, obviously. But where they're looking at each student's dorms, but we never see what his dorm room looks like. I'm very curious. Like, I imagine if it isn't as as rotic as you think it would be, right? And I remember at the time, a lot of people had theories that maybe he was the traitor, actually. It's like, oh, that's a clue, you know. We didn't see his room. He's the traitor. It's like, really? Come on. <laughs> I expect nudity pics and that, to be honest. Or, to, to be quite fair, I don't. Like, I, I, I imagine this is just sort of the the persona he puts on. But in reality, when you see what, what, what he actually is, like, behind the scenes, he's actually a very cheerful, nice guy. Like, I don't know, maybe. That's one thing, maybe. But, uh... Yeah, a lot, a lot of this chapter really is focused on I I Izuka and his relationship with Uraranka, and we see him giving her this look and not having had any time to talk to her and that, etc., etc., especially since she gave that very heartwarming speech to, to the crowd to, you know, to stop getting angry at him and to let him come in. Uh, we then have uh, All Might uh, burst into the room. I am here, just like every day, <laughs> which is... Which is hilarious. Oh, please, do, please don't, do, please don't kill him off. <laughs> and we got the detective as well. Uh, what's his name? Detective uh, Suchikachi, Suchikachi, Koyuchi, Suchikachi. 
My Japanese pronunciation is terrible, people. It's very bad. Um, but yeah, um, and the principal as well. Uh, principal is it? Ne, ne, no, it's not Nemu. Nemu are those creatures. Hmm. But yeah, All Might comes in and it's about what comes next and we're only informing select individuals for now. And it's time to discuss our final plans for the second pitiful war. So it's kind of crazy to think that we're, that we just had this one big war, right? And what, it's been, it's been a year, I think, since, since we had that war in that arc. And it's just sort of been this, uh, this time jump really. I've seen Izuku doing his thing and then having that whole situation with stars and stripes, etc, etc. And now we're cutting... We're getting to this point in the series where now we're, get, we're getting straight away to the second final battle now. Like, it's very fast paced. Like, a lot of people will say, yeah, this this feels very rushed. And they're not wrong. It, it is very fast paced. But it, it, it does really feel like uh, Hokigashi, is it, is it Hokigashi that does it? He wants to just end this series and I, and I and you know it makes sense because uh, back in the day he did say he had like he had ideas up to volumes 30 that you know that was he said that was his talk he wanted to write 30 volumes and i think he's gone past that point now and it's like yeah you could kind of tell that he just wants to wrap this up now at this point which is fine it's fair enough do you know what i mean uh, as long as the final battle holds up as long as every character's arc is completed in a in a good and decent way and the ending is fine as it is do you know what I mean then there's no problems with it but yeah you, you kind of feel like man I wish there was some sort of downtime between what happened and what's happening uh, but you can't really have downtime because essentially the villains in a way won they won at the end of that first war and things have just been chaos at this point so I kind of make sense that things are wrapping up in this big pace but it you know but uh, if you're expecting some sort of like a time skip, like a big time skip where the villains are controlling everything, not not necessarily. You know, the heroes are still there. There are still heroes who are fighting, the students especially. So you wouldn't be able to get that kind of world currently. If they all fall, if all by Izuku and all them fall, then yeah, you can kind of expect to see that kind of world. But uh, the, the way this story is presented, it wouldn't really happen. And um uh, I don't mind it to be honest. I, I just like that we're sort of getting to the end of this, and I'm just curious how it's going to get wrapped up. But yeah, we see we see our characters. We see we see All Might about to discuss these plans. We see the people that he trusts with the plan, and we see that it's Hawks, uh, Endobar, Blue Genius, uh, one of the uh, Pussy Cats. We see uh, Ariyazawa, uh, Awazawa in in prison, uh, looking at uh, what's his name, Kuragiri. Uh, we see uh, uh, Ayoma, uh, Ayoma in, in, in a prison cell. We cut to, I believe, who, uh, uh, what is it? Um, uh, Bukago, Bukago? Uh, is, is that how you say his name? Bakugo, Bakugo, and uh, um, Toshiri, Toshiri. Oh my god, I really need to rewatch the anime. Like, I forget. There's too much. I, I, I watch and read too much to the point where I'm having a hard time remembering all these names, but. Uh, Shoto, basically, yeah, Shoto, that's his name, Shoto, we're seeing panels of them, but we're not getting told what the plan is, okay, it's just a quick flash of these characters, uh, of their expressions, uh, but we, and even Endobor, like, he, get, he gets, I think he gets given what the plan is in an envelope, in a, in a letter, and, he, and he's reading it, There's this, he's got this sort of, like, sad expression on there, but we don't hear or see what the plan is, which means that there's obviously going to be some sort of twist in this plan, and usually when, uh, in stories like this when the plan is told uh, it falls apart the fact that we are not being told what the plan is means that we're gonna have a flashback to it later on but there's gonna be some sort of twist to it you know so we, we move on to the next day and the principals made an announcement and we we see we see one of the spies basically from uh, working for all for one hearing what you know the crowd is being told he's in the crowd apparently Tomoro Shigaraki is gonna make a big move in just four days so if we go back to the early parts of the chapter, um, uh, they, they, what is it? They said, Yue is aware that Tomoro Shigaraki will be operational in less than a week's time. And now apparently Tomoro Shigaraki is going to make a big move in just four days. So there seems to be a bit of a confusion here. And uh, you got the heroes thanking the citizens, uh, the you know the evac, the evac, the evacuees inside the academy, thanking them. You've got Kota there, uh, you know, running up to Midori as he's leaving, and he's like, "You've given me more than enough time to clean myself up. In this case, rest up, heal up, 
and now it's time to move on to the next phase of the plan it's time to get out and not put these people in danger that's pretty much one of the main reasons you know you've got one of the heroes pretty much saying you folks safety is the goal we're shooting for so all we're asking is that you're all in the right frame of mind if and when it's time to go go with the evac system and then you got the uh, infront trader thinking these honest fools they could have made the big man's life so much harder by shutting their traps uh, and keeping the boy protected here but uh, we didn't plan it this way but now our mission is sure to succeed so the fact that Midoriya is leaving the academy uh, the fact that they've even told the crowd how many days are left until Shigaraki makes his move that for me is is an obvious ploy of some sort they must realize they must know that there's infiltrators in there and they're properly saying this stuff in order to weed the traders out basically that's one thing is going on because it, it, it's too perfect for them in a, it's a case of oh Midori is not going to be in the academy anymore he's not going to be protected great uh, he's going to be by himself or just with these kids uh, we now know what their plan is when the heroes are going to move it's too it's too clean cut if that makes sense there's something more going on that we've not been told and I'm thinking the heroes are aware that there is spies in there in the mist so as the chapter goes on we see uh, the characters and the heroes, the students mainly saying their goodbyes to their families. You've got Midori saying goodbye to his mom. You've got Shoto saying his goodbyes to his siblings. You've got um, uh, the octopus dude saying goodbye to, I'm assuming, his mom or relative who looks like a horse or something. Weird. Uh, Bakugo's parents as well, his mom and dad there. <laughs> I think his mom slapped him on the head or something maybe. Uh, Obviously more heroes. You've got the principal as well with the, the uh, healing uh, lady, the nurse. Um, what's his name? You've got Henry there with uh, Microphone Jack, is it? Uh, and she's saying her goodbyes along with Kodo to, to Midoriya and a bunch of other characters in the background as well. And then we cut to the next part of the location. So 30 kilometers from UA, the, he the heroes, the student heroes have been have been taken to a new hideout or a new place to keep them safe, a new fortress called Troy, which has been made by some of the other heroes in this case, uh, Cementos, Power Loader and Ectoplasm, who helped build this. The name is very telling. Uh, the fortress is called Troy. Now, anyone who knows the basic history and mythology uh, knows that you know the city of Troy was a very well-guarded, well-protected city. But then uh, the uh, the enemies they they made they made a, a wooded horse and they they snuck a bunch of their soldiers inside it, uh, basically a Trojan horse and they and and you know the Troy the citizens thinking it was a gift from the gods, uh, took it into their city without realizing that the the enemies were in hiding inside it. The enemies came out they slipped out of the wooded horse, and they basically pulled the defenses of the city down from the inside and let their armies come in and destroy from the inside out essentially. So the fact that the that the that the here you know the students are staying at a place called Troy is very worrying because uh, you know if we're going with what history or what happened in history in or at least in our history the very likely thing that's going to happen is is that you know there's an infiltrator here like someone is is a Trojan horse and they're going to take the freaking fortress down from the inside. Now my personal belief is is that this is all a ploy. It's a trick. The heroes are aware that there's spies. They're aware that there's traitors in their midst. They are aware. I mean, after the whole situation with uh, Ayoma, surely they're going to have their eyes and ears more open, right? A lot of people are sort of uh, predicting online, saying that possibly, potentially, Toga has infiltrated. I don't think that's the... And if it is the case, if it is the case, I'm thinking the heroes and the students will be aware of it. I mean, there's no way... Because, again, we weren't told the plan. There's no way that uh, All Might would throw these guys into a new location and be like, yeah, you're going to be staying here, blah, blah, blah. But it's a trick. It's, it's, it's a trap, you know, not for you, but for them. So it's going to be a, a reverse Trojan horse. You know, whoever the spy or, or, or infiltrator will be that's snuck in is going to be thinking, okay, great, I'm inside. I'm going to pull the defenses down. All for one's going to come in. The villains are going to come in. That's not going to be the case. They're the ones who are going to be caught. And maybe through them, they're going to find out where all for one is perhaps and use their information so like i said a reverse trojan horse or reverse troy if you will that's what i'm thinking is going to happen so we get the students going into their new dormitories deku's in his place and he sees Ororanka chilling out outside and he i think he literally jumps out from his potentially from his window uh, to get to her 
and they have they have a little talk where Izuka finally thanks her for what she did at the gate, you know, a few chapters back. And we get this very we get this very wholesome conversation between these two. Now, uh, a lot of people ship these two characters together. Fair enough, I, I do too, but when it comes to romance in my stories, manga and anime like this, for me it's very 50-50, you know, sometimes I'm for it, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I like the way where it's just subtly done. You know, you don't need the characters confessing like, I love you, be with me, blah blah blah. The way this is done in this chapter, um, works very well. Like I said, it's very wholesome. These characters don't need to say how they feel about the other. Just with them talking normally like they are, they already understand each other, if that makes sense. Um, like I said, wholesome. And Uruka starts this with, I'm kind of weird. And you've got De you know Deku defending her, going, you're not weird, you're strong and brave. With a hairdo that's perfect for you, not to mention kind and honest. That's pretty much, he doesn't even have to say he likes the things that he's saying are very positive things. It's enough. And then you got her saying, that's not what I meant. Didn't see that coming. Back then, back there, when I was shouting from the top of UA out of nowhere, thoughts of Himiku Toga popped into my mind. So she's reflecting on, on that situation with Toga that she had and what she said to her. And that, you know, that realization that, uh, you know, Uraka so she herself realizes she looks so sad hearing that. She looked sad, you know, T Toko did. She she was very, she wanted a certain answer from Uraka, who she likes, she's very obsessed with. And it wasn't the answer she wanted to hear. And she it, it seemed that she was very distraught and upset. And it's not Uraka's fault as well, because, it, you know, you, you, you look at what the villains did, you look at the city, the destruction they caused, and the people that died, and... You know, you can't blame her for the answer that she gave her. But she does say she's a person too, and I have no clue what's obvious for her, like what she takes for granted. I got to thinking about how I don't know the first thing about Himiko Toka. And that's a very interesting reflection because even, you know, she says that's weird that the fact that she has, she's got these feelings, she's got these thoughts for someone like her, that, that she wants to sort of understand her. And you've got Deku jumping in with, you know, I saw a little boy inside of Shig Shigaraki and he was crying. Maybe there's no way to avoid a battle, but I can't ignore what I saw deep inside him. Now, a lot of people are, are stressing, sort of like, you know, the fan base, like, you know, just because he saw that doesn't mean he can try and save him. You know, Shigaraki, the way he is, that you know, how powerful he is, how dangerous, he needs to die, right? He needs to be killed. But obviously, Deku, saw, you know, he saw an innocent individual in there. He saw that sad, pure side of Shigaraki that was corrupted, hurt and change into the monster that he's become and uh, Uraraka herself you know she sort of gets that vibe from Togo as well you know she saw someone that was clearly very sad very damaged and it's it's a nice way of these two basically saying that connection that these two are basically talking about and having together is the fact that they want to understand the villains they want to understand what makes them take why they're doing what they're doing uh, who they are what who they were before all of this happened, why it happened. It's it's a very heroic thing kind of say, because you always have those heroes who want to fight and kill the villain at no cost, and then you have the heroes who generally want to help and maybe, you know, redeem them if you can, you know, like obviously Hero Academia isn't Naruto, you know, you can't always have that talk no jutsu. And this isn't like uh, the Marvel comics or, or films like with Spider-Man, like not killing the villain and that. Sometimes certain situations arise where you're forced to take that stance. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it, it, it's almost sort of similar to a Man of Steel, where Superman ends up snapping Zod's neck because he's about to kill a bunch of innocent people, and if he doesn't, he's just going to break out and kill more people. He has no choice. So, in in, in that regard, obviously, you know, Uraka refers to herself as weird that she has these sort of feelings, that sort of wanting to understand Toga and Deku as well. But you have to, you know, and he says as well. I guess both of us are kind of weird. But you have to look at the deeper meaning here, like, what does that mean for the both of them? I mean, at the end of the day, they do say, we'll put a stop to them for sure. And we do cut to Shoto as well. And this is a great, very uh, wholesome moment as well, where Shoto is talking with Ida and Red Riot and Bakugo as well. And, you know, Ida is trying to, you know, 
you know, sort of give some of his experience with to Shota in terms of that he has an older brother as well. And he's like, hey, cut, cut that out. There's no comparing our family. And he's right, there is no comparing the families because Ida's brother is a hero, okay? He, you know, he's not a villain. He's not a, a killer, a murderer. Uh, but Shoto isn't angry about that. Instead, he's like, heck, I don't even know Toya's favorite food. And Bok you know, Bokugo just, instead of getting angry and jumping up, he's just like, gotta be piping hot Udo. And he's like, oh, in that case, I'll make him sit down for a ball with me. So you've got, you know, you've got, you've, Understanding the villains again, uh, you know, Toga, you know, uh, Uraraka trying to understand Toga, Deku trying to understand Shigaraki, and then you've got, to you know, Shoto here who's, you know, he's not talking about wanting to kill his brother, he wants, he, w he wants to make him sit down and have a ball with him for Christ's sake, he wants to know his brother, he wants to understand him, he wants to get to know him, these, 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 these kids are the very definition of pure heroes, if you will, they don't want to kill these guys if they can. They want to try and help them if it's possible. But or you know, but you know, I, I think all, at least when it comes to these three in particular, in the end of the day, they are committed when they say, or at least when Uraka and Deku says it, we'll put a stop to them for sure. They will stop them. I think if if the necessity necess necessity arises, they will do what they have to. But at the moment, how they're sort of you know, thinking that clarity, it's a case of they want to help them. I think that's very beautiful as well. It is beautiful. But you have to wonder, you have to question, at what point do things have to get even worse before they sit down, put their hands down and go, I'm going to have to kill them. Like, maybe that's not how things will go, but we'll see in it. The chapter then ends uh, with a panel of all for one and uh, the panel saying the day of the operation and he hit the last line being, shall we? He's got some sort of remote in his hand, it's probably someone called him, told him something and the show is on. So at this point we're going into I guess the prelude or the other act or act one of the final battle or war if you will. But yeah, very good chapter, very good wholesome chapter where two of our characters just sit down and talk with each other and try to relate and understand each other and come to a very satisfying conclusion in terms of that yeah they both have the same kind of thinking and thought process and it's going to be interesting to see what is going to happen with these guys at this at this new location and what it means for the uh, infiltrators as well like has someone infiltrated them or is there going to be an infiltration what's going to happen next Overall, good chapter, can't wait for the next one, and I hope you enjoyed my review slash reaction to this. As always, guys, remember to like and subscribe, and I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care.